by Stephen Glover in the Daily Mail, and I think it works. I think this is it. This is the answer. Let's do it. We have several uninhabited islands, like Sampson on the Scilly Isles or Taransay in the Outer Hebrides. We should turn them all into giant migrant camps. And when we pick people up in the channel, we can take them straight there. They are uninhabited, apparently, so no local residents will be disadvantaged. Building the one-off large-scale migrant camp will cost us a fraction of continually buying barges and renting out hotels and building new social housing. Crucially, these are British territories, so it completely removes the need to go through the courts and get a positive ruling on Rwanda. We would not be outsourcing our responsibilities. We would not be sending them to a country with a dodgy human rights record. We are, of course, a safe country. We currently have a situation where the people of Portland have a multi-million pound barge docking in their port, soon to be full of free-range channel migrant men. These people will stay for processing, but we all know that none of them will end up going to Rwanda. So the barge is full in a weekend, and then they probably just stay there indefinitely, massively impacting local residents. This problem is solved with Channel Migrant Island. RAF Scampton can get its £300 million regeneration scheme now, can't it? Because the 2,000 men that were going to be housed there can instead be housed on Channel Migrant Island. Terence is five and three quarter square miles, supposedly. It could easily accommodate about 50,000 people, couldn't it? They would be safe and they would finally have the asylum that they so desperately craved. They would be, of course, very, very well looked after. We'd build the infrastructure and the public would also be safe and uh, some of those people would never have to go to Africa, to Rwanda, or in some cases, of course, go back to Africa. It shuts up the Human Rights Brigade, doesn't it? It would be cheaper in the long run and it would, of course, crucially be a deterrent. It would also create jobs. We'd need people to work on Channel Migrant Island. All these legal loophole technicalities that have allowed our country to be absolutely rinsed by illegal immigration, it's about time we started turning the tables, isn't it? Yes, you can stay in Britain for processing and quite possibly be granted asylum, but you will spend your time on that island over there. Do you want that? Or does France suddenly look bloody lovely? What are the House of Lords going to do about this, eh? Say it'll cost too much to set up. I mean, the current plans are costing us billions. Will they say it's against people's human rights? How? It's a British territory. Surely they wouldn't be stupid enough to find themselves going on record and revealing that they actually care more for the well-being of the indigenous puffin population on a remote rocky outcrop than they do for the emotional, financial and physical well-being of actual British citizens. Our military managed to knock up a few army bases in war zones in Afghanistan. Camp Bastion apparently managed to accommodate around 24,000 people. Those Nightingale hospitals went up pretty quickly, didn't they? This solves all our problems. Well done, Stephen Glover, for cracking the problem. It's time we used our own resources to solve this issue. Let's get these islands set up now. Well, in the studio, joining me right now is Fadi Farah, senior legal...